This lesson is a quick look at the command line options that are available on the Java compiler. Whenever you specify the name of a class on an import statement, the compiler will look for it in the standard places with a standard installation that will find it. However, if you're using some special class file or for any reason have some class files stored in a non-standard location, you have to tell the compiler where to look for them. You can do this by naming the directories on the command line with this option or by setting the class path environment variable. The class path is a list of directory names separated by semicolons on Windows and separated by colons on other systems. The compiler produces class files. The default is to put them in the current directory, but this option instructs the compiler to put them in this other directory. If you compile a program and get a message from the compiler saying that you're using something that has been deprecated, you can compile it again with this option to get more information about what has been deprecated. Something, usually a method, becomes deprecated when a newer method or whatever is the preferred form. Quite often there is a better way of doing something or sometimes they just change the name of a method to try to get a more standardized pattern to the naming. Using something that has been deprecated is not an error. Your program will run just fine with it, but what you might want to do is run the compiler with this option, find out what you are using that has been deprecated, look it up in the documentation. Right there, you'll find a link to the preferred way of doing things. This has to do with the encoding of the text in the source file. If for some reason you wind up with source code from some strange place and need to translate the characters into something you can compile, then you need to research this. Otherwise, forget about it. If you're going to be running a debugger on the program, you can use this option to have the compiler include lots more debugging information than just the source file and the line number. This can be used to prevent the compiler from including even the source file and line number information. The compiler will include certain kinds of debugging information based on the keywords you include in a comma-separated list. Now, there are only three of these keywords. This includes source file debugging information, line number debugging information, local variable debugging information. This option will print this list of options. This disables all warning messages. I'm sure there is a reason for this option. I just can't think of one right now. This enables support for compiling source code containing assertions. Setting release to 1.4 allows assertions in the code. Setting it to 1.3 disallows them. This specifies the directories in which the compiler will look for source files. It's a list of directory names separated by semicolons a location can also be a jar or a zip file. This option causes the compiler to output lots of information about what it's doing while it's doing it. Each class file is compiled to be run with the current version of the virtual machine. Future virtual machines are expected to run it, but those from the past won't. You can specify that the compiler should produce a class file of the previous version by specifying this option. There are four versions that can be specified and you write them just simple number dot number. That's the major number and minor number. This option specifies directories containing a different set of standard classes than the ones installed with your compiler. It can be in directories, jar files, or zip files. This option specifies directories containing a different set of extension classes than the ones installed into your compiler. There are a few options that are not considered standard in Java, but they're included as sort of a test or a special case. Exactly what these options are will vary from one version of Java to the next. This displays the list of non-standard options. You ought to give this a try with your current compiler because you're almost certain to find some options that are not listed here. This redirects the message generated by the compiler into the named file. This can be handy when you get so many errors that they scroll off the screen and you can't see the first ones. 
This causes a warning message to be issued for every case statement that doesn't have a break before the next case statement. There are circumstances where the compiler needs to run the Java virtual machine. And with this option, you can specify an option to be passed to the Java virtual machine. The Java virtual machine that's used to run Java programs has a number of command line options. The options fall into two categories. The standard options that are expected to be a part of the Java command for some time to come and the non-standard options which are designed for a special purpose and may be gone or work differently in the next version of Java. This is the default setting. It selects the client version of the Java virtual machine. This overrides the default of the client virtual machine and uses the server virtual machine instead. This is two different ways of specifying the same option. This specifies that the default class path setting should be ignored and that all classes are to be found in the directories specified in the class path. It's a list of directory names which may include the names of jar files and zip files separated by semicolons on Windows and separated by colons on other systems. A property in Java is a name that has a character string assigned to it as its value. Among the ways to set a system property is to use this command line option. Either of these will cause the JVM to display information about each class file as it is loaded. This option will cause the JVM to report on each garbage collection event as it occurs. This tracks the recycling of unused objects. This form of the verbose option causes the JVM to report on usage of natively executable methods. The acronym JNI stands for Java Native Interface and deals with the calls from Java to native executable code. This instructs the JVM to print the version number and not do anything else. This instructs the JVM to print the version number and then continue to load and execute the class files normally. These two print this list of options. This enables assertions for the named package or class. If a package name specified is appended with three dots, it also enables assertions for all of its sub-packages. Assertions are disabled by default. This disables all assertions of the named package or class. All assertions are disabled by default, but if an option was specified enabling the assertions for, say, an entire package, then this option could be used to disable them for specific classes or sub-packages. This enables assertions in all system classes. This is the default. This disables assertion in all system classes. This option will list the non-standard options available in the JVM. You should use this option on your JVM to see what's available, which will certainly differ a little from what I'm going to show you here. This is the default. Mixed mode operation means that only heavily used sections of code are compiled into native binary executables for speed while the program is running. The rest of the code is interpreted as Java bytecodes. This is the fastest mode of execution. Execute all code in interpreted mode only. None of the bytecodes are compiled into native code. This option disables class garbage collection. Classes are loaded from the disk and used to generate objects. When there are no more objects of the class, the memory used to hold the class definition is normally recycled. This option will enable the incremental garbage collection, which collects garbage intermittently while the program is running. Normally, the garbage collection is off and not employed until memory is needed by the program. This logs the process of garbage collection to the named file. This will disable background compilation. This option sets the initial size of the Java heap, and this option sets the maximum size of the Java heap, and this option sets the stack size for Java threads. This will output profiling data on the CPU. This starts the JVM running with debugging enabled. And this option enforces strict checking of the formats of the class files.
Without this option, some of the looser formats from earlier versions of Java are allowed to execute without comment. This option is called future because it is expected that the future versions of Java will be more strict.